Hi, it's Christian from Berlin. And uh, a tutorial on how to grow up would be roughly the same as asking for a tutorial on cocktail piano. Because actually good cocktail piano needs a lot of time, experience and also knowledge. So this can only be a glimpse. Okay, thanks very much. And uh, let's go right there, have our first cocktail, like maybe seafood cocktail. Welcome mm. to the world of mundane cocktail piano. First, we have to define what is actually cocktail piano. So something, some think that uh, actually cocktail piano is anything that has that has a, a lot of <laughs> fast arpeggios. And sometimes the people who do that think so as well. Sometimes yeah, you get uh, in a hotel to get a classical trained pianist and do and think, oh yeah, I'm cocktail pianist. No, it's not true. Is just not true, and um, uh, the 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 reason why it's not true because classical cocktail piano is what you hear. The cliche of cocktail piano is what you hear when you see a Hollywood movie and you see Tom Cruise and uh, whatever Nicole Kidman in a posh bar, uh, expensive, elegant place, and what you there hear in the background, that is cocktail piano jazz, but it's smooth jazz. But the harmonic structure and the sound is jazz. It's an easy listening jazz. Okay, I will show you uh, what I mean. Let's say, okay, we had, we go, we, uh, I will uh, exemplify it. That's a good word uh, for German. That's very good. Exemplify it um, with, the, uh, with the song you all know. The song is called Moon Rover and uh, also known as Moon River, but hey, have you seen a moon rover? Yes, millions of people have seen the moon rover. Have you ever seen a moon river? See, a bit of common sense is always good to understand the word. But I stick to the name moon river because it's the it's mainstream name. Mainstream name. Okay. We have um, first I play it um, this way you learn it in some tutorials in the uh, so-called internet. That is maybe like. Um, Yeah, that's the average tutorial. And uh, you see, I just used the C uh, major chord, quite simple. And uh, now I'll show you, even without huge, without huge arpeggio, you immediately will know it's cocktail piano. Oh, no, that was wrong, cocktail piano. That cocktail piano, what is different? And that's what I will focus on mainly. It's why the basic sound is different, because it's how we play the chords. You see, when we played uh, in the uh, uh, in the retarded version, we play the C chord just like this, but it doesn't doesn't give us much uh, great sound, right? Because it's too simple. The cocktail piano somehow sounds different, and the reason is we use voicings. Voicings means how we play a chord. Um, like uh, this is also a voicing of C, um, or let's say. Mm, this is also a voicing, like with the bass. It's how it's played, how it's displayed on the piano. That's the voicing. Now I'll show you a typical cocktail piano voicing. And it's coming from the basic jazz, not the wild one that you hate, like, but uh, the early jazz, like. Ooh, see, so you already, you, it's going down your back, right? It's, you're shivering right now. Then if we play the melody, what is different? It's the chord, of course, is C major. We have different chords too. We don't have the C7 from blues. We have different uh, 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 um, 
intervals also. Of course, only blues has the seven chords. Uh, in the music there are major chords, minor chords, minor seven, half diminished. So we have to dig a little and you have to try to get to grips with it, get to understand it. So now here we have, for example, it's the third, the fifth, the seven and the nine here. And the root is played by the bass. That is news for you, right? That this is C major because you don't see the C. It's played by the bass. And then we have uh, this nice open, slightly complex sparkling champagne sound um, by adding to the basic C chord like E and G. This you still know. We're adding the major seven and the nine because the chord is called major seven, but we always, almost always add the nine to get an even nicer sound. That is very often done in jazz to add more tension notes or optional notes it's called, like the seven and the nine are almost always there. So in this way we have, okay. Now I explain you that this voicing has a name and we call it by the, uh, it's called Freddy. No, I'm joking. It's, uh, we call it, um, by the numbers. We count from the bottom. Three, five, seven, nine. That's the name of this voicing. It's the three, five, seven, nine voicing. It's the intervals. It's easy to remember. Um, and uh, then, for example, we have another voicing. Uh, for three, five, seven, nine, and okay, we go. Oh, still shivering. It's, I think I got a goosebump, no, many. I got goose, goosebumps under my feet. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. It's a bit sexy. Um, so. Now, this chord is called A minor. You know this A minor. You might also know A minor 7, like this one. And again, we're using the luxury voicing. This time it's a different one. And these two voicings already bring you through most hotels. Uh, Cause you see it's A minor. Now what, let's watch what this is. So we have the seven again, the nine, the three, and the five. Seven, nine, three, five. We always call the second the nine so that we don't confuse it. So remember, uh, seven, two, three, five. It's the same numbers than in the first chord, three, five, seven, nine. It's just an inversion of those. And with this, with these two things, you can already do a lot of charming piano playing at a bar. I will show you. Now, F major. Three, five, seven, nine. Seven, two, three, five. Yeah, just these two. Three, five, seven, nine. Three, five, seven, nine. Here we stop for a moment. You see, the first are clear, right? F, A minor, and C. And um, uh, then, of course, we have uh, chords that the voicings are a bit more complex, but you can, uh, like the jazz voicings, like for example, oh no, it was this one. It's uh, B, half diminished. You know, this is the diminished triad. Half diminished, we add the seven. Diminished would be with a diminished seven. And we have the half diminished seven. The triad is diminished, two minor thirds, and the minor seven. And we put the seven down here, and we have, so there's a root in it. Doesn't matter, this, this type of chord can have the root, it sounds nice. And then we have, for example, the E7. And then I'll show you uh, a bit complex voicing, but it's so nice. It's, uh, it's worth staying here. 
unless you have already shut the door on me because you think like 7-9, oh bugger off man, this is uh, not what I expect from life. Like, um, be half diminished, stay with me, it's nice, it's educative, educational, and then... And we want to have like the A minor again, that's where we are landing, is again 7, 2, 3, 5. Make these numbers your lottery numbers. These 3, 5, 7, 9 or 7, 2, 3, 5. Keep, like if you have 6, if you need 6 lottery numbers, just uh, uh, leave 2 empty. You won't win a million, but you will always remember this voicing. Sometimes you have to set priorities. Okay. Who cares about a million if you can play piano? Um, and the, so we came from the half diminished, and then we have the E7. This is the um, simple man's version, like just E major third and the seven, and the underpaid cocktail pianist's version is this one. Okay, we see major third. This is actually the sh the um, the augmented five. It's the sharp five. Then the seven you know again from E7, and this is the sharp nine. I know, don't ask, just don't ask. You're living here on a need to know basis. Three, augmented five, seven, and sharp nine. And this is a beautiful voicing for a dominant seventh chord. The dominant seventh chord is, it's like the five in blues, you know? It's uh, that resolves to the one, and in this case, this voicing resolves to the one in minor, meaning this is the E7, it's the five of A minor. And then, you can just play an evening these two chords and you will get, uh, well, your pay will still be crap, but um, you get free orange juice. So, um, again, on like this. You see? Oh, <laughs> once more. We use it sometimes in blues in a kind of um, mm, tamed down version, you know, like... Remember? It's the same chord. We don't use all of those, but um, here we use like major third, augmented five, seven, and nine, and we go to A minor. So in this, I want to give you a little bit um, like a, a glimpse of that the true good pianist has many different uh, things at his fingertips. Yeah, um, this is like I give you some basic stuff but um, there would be um, much more how to express such a chord. For these first couple of chords, you could also, um, we don't go into detail, I'm just saying, you can also play, play a nice arpeggiated version of Moon, Moon Rover, like. <laughs> Let's do it again, that was a bad Moon Rover. See, I mixed already these voicings and I dissolved them like F, F major. I used this voicing, but I dissolved it. And I also know that playing this sounds kind of pearly if I use the, the fifth and the octave. So this is all knowledge um, gathered from experience and learning and experiencing and just random, random trying. Um, uh, or you could also play this like, uh, you see, uh -huh. hold on. 
And here, for example, C, I play the simple version, primary school uh, C chord. And then I play here the melody and I add the major seven here. It also sounds nicer and tender and fragile. And then I play thirds here. And I know that it sounds nice when I play A minor, I play or here I play now the F major in the basic position. So this is also another way of playing. We cannot go into detail, we just cannot, because long Long videos you don't like, I know that. Com too complicated videos you don't like, I know that. So this is already quite complicated, yeah? But I'm just showing that the, the for real cocktail piano, you have to learn and gather experience and um, uh, practice a lot of different stuff. But this bass voicing is a traditional good way of expressing bass, expressing chord, expressing melody expressing bass, expressing chord, expressing melody, expressing bass, expressing chord, expressing melody. So we have two areas, three areas covered. So what can you do um, if you have two chords in one bar? Because this always needs one bar, right? One and two and three and one, um, one and two and three and each takes one bar, it's a three-fourth bar. Uh, so later in the piece we, for example, have... Ah! So, um, in that case we skip the bar, skip this all together and just play voicings. That's just fine. Um, like, um, this for example is F sharp half diminished. Um, I won't go further into detail. And then, for example, the B. This is again an altered voice, and you can have a look at this one, um, like uh, uh, with the seven. Here's the, now the sharp nine, the major third, and the sharp five. You've seen the one on E7, and this is one very close for B7, because the tonic is E minor. I'm confusing you right now. But that's just the case, just for you who want to learn this. Uh, this is also a dominant voicing for, um, for E minor. It's just an inversion of the one you learned before in E7. So again, we have... Um, now we have E minor 7, 3, 5, 7, 9, A7, Seven, nine, three, five. D minor seven, three, five, seven, nine. You see, and then we can go on with this one. Now, what can we do? That's probably what you've been waiting for. Any tricks for the right hand to make it sound um, like expensive and beautiful, like, like your master. Um, and um, there, of course, you're waiting for some cascade, like, you know, because many think this is cocktail piano. Yeah, if you put it into the right um, uh, mix, then it can be nice, but uh, some overdo it, I would call that mannerism. Anyway, what is it? It's, I, did a re uh, I did a tutorial recently about this in blues, and it's just the same trick, basically. It's like, let's take C major, and then, we take and so on and then if you practice that it's just the three finger affair in that I call it what did I just do there it's uh, just an arpeggio and instead of the boring arpeggio look how this sounds this arpeggio look listen um, F this is like a classical pianist who would come to the hotel for a gig and they always are there sometimes like technically good Russians or uh, at least in Berlin and um, 
this is just the they do just this the F um, chord and arpeggiate it. But it sounds much nicer if you also include tension notes like for this one. Can you hear the difference? Instead of this one, I just take the tension note, skip the root, and it's just so, so much nicer and expensive than just boring, boring. So if you arpeggiate, then do it with the at least one tension note. This is also a nice trick. You can do like a arpeggiate with a tension note. Then that's just this one. Um, F major. Yeah. Then I take the next ones. Tension note, both tension notes, the seven and nine. Again. And um, so these are nice little little tricks. Then of course it's always nice. Um, it's always a bit Swedish, the thirds. It's just the thirds in the key of A minor, so no black notes. Um, bit boring, but you know you need diversion when you have a six hour hotel gig and they are long, those hotel gigs, they like four hours nothing, five hours is normal, six hours is also not rare. And, um, and then you, of course you stretch the piece uh, as long as you can because oh, you, you don't know what to play anymore. Um, and then if you want to give it some more rich sound, more pompous, you do like... What is that? It's also like, remember the tension notes. We have F, three, five, seven, nine. And what we do here is, again, we don't play the F uh, uh, chord, just simple like an inversion like this one, for example, or this one. Yawn, I'm falling asleep right now. Um, but you, again, it's so much nicer. And this, the rest is just inversions. Like you replace the um, the root with the major seven. This alone keeps the um, keeps the the, um, the uh, tip going. And or then A minor. Rubbish. And always is nice a little uh, like if this is the target note. This target note, yeah. No, this target note. A little embellishment is always great for cocktail piano. Actually, it's also quite essential, I must say. Like, and embellishment sounds great. This is like the classical, it's not the trill, it has another name in German. Um, German we call it the praller. It's not a triller, but a praller. Or a, sl a slope. No, it's called a sl like, um, I don't know. S uh, what you, uh, yeah, slope. So. Not this one. And then a lot of these. thirds. Octave is always good. Octaves also is the first thing you should re resort to instead of, I like it quite intimate in the beginning, like, uh, hold on. Um, and then Later on, if there are enough, uh, uh, I don't know, depending on the audience, you go. Sometimes you just mix in the. Uh, uh, 
complete chord that it doesn't uh, stick out that you're just playing octaves. It's E7, for example. I skip, very much skip the root and play a tension note. Now listen. Oh! So that's, um, that's the trick. If you want to know another way to play nice, um, uh, like uh, great sounds, there's a, another way uh, for these voicings that I introduced you just briefly. And that is, for example, if you play the G7, like this, and uh, like here's uh, root seven major third. And then on the, on the major sixth of the, root like from G is the major six is A. You are building the major triad just like that. Like on this one it would be E major triad. And you will see, it, it's amazing. It this um, technique is called superimposed triads. So it's the seven G7 with the third and now on the sixth major six we build the triad like that it's E major triad. And now listen to this. You see, voicing is a is a real big big field. So this is a dominant now. It's a G seven, yeah. And now resolve to a C, of course, to the one. And this is called a, would be called like a two-handed voicing, because we spread the chord on two hands. That is very much advanced. Um, like you get. Um, you can spread the all the different voices on two hands also, and this is one possibility. So, and then resolve to in this C chord, the voicing is one, three, six, nine, five, and it sounds so nice. You know why it sounds so nice? Because it almost only consists of fourths. This sounds too hard, but with the root. But because fourths have an open sound, because uh, thirds have a closed sound rather, because they let you determine very easy what chord it is. If you play thirds, there's always indicating what chord is behind it. With fourths, you don't, you don't have that. So it sounds by tendency a bit more open. Again, like C, or octaving the sixth, and octaving the here and then the nine or playing the major. So that is another option. Uh, you can practice all this or if you want to go further there's enough uh, specialized tutorials on, on that one. Um, and um, uh, one last thing is if you if you solo a little bit here, if you want to solo, uh, you do just on this Blum, 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 what we just learned. And if you play, make sure you, the most upper note is a tension note. That's important because otherwise uh, it doesn't sound as nice. I give you an example. I play just C and then I start here the run. And I didn't stop on the C, I stopped on the 9. And it sounds nicer, like. And then I go to the major seven, also tension known. Yeah. Nine, seven. So the, the dominant highest sounding note is a um, tension note. A minor. I play some notes like chicken come here, play, pick some notes. Nine and seventh of A minor. Of course, these are just you know basic rules. In in uh, in real life, I mix them. You know, it's not forbidden to play the uh, this here. It doesn't sound bad, C. But this sounds just nice. 
A minor, but you see now I'm landing on the third of E minor, A minor. F, this is the fourth, super tension note, I'll explain that in a bit. The nine of F. Seven. <laughs> nice, eh? Okay, that for like improvising on the C or A minor and uh, at least some of that, some of the accents gotta be nice on the tension notes. And for an ending, you can always bluff away through an ending with just one knowledge, one knowledge. I think that's wrong English. One, one knowledge, okay. You're here because you know I'm German. Um, and that is, uh, like the last chords are uh, of that song are and we play like that will be the last chord of um, Moon River or I sometimes add a 10 because my fingers are long enough and you see we have all what we need we have a tension note here major third and a tension note in between that makes it nice uh, and luxurious like a single malt whiskey and then but now it's not all now listen then arpeggio what the heck was that can you see it i don't know if my camera is there i do it here so um like This is the sharp 11, like the, it's not the fourth, but it's this one and that is called the sharp 11. And it only pleases your ear if, if you give it enough time. You can, you can um, play to your ear almost anything if you give it time to adjust. So within the piece, it would sound wrong, but in the end, It works, huh? Ooh, see, and that's always important. So if you can just want to learn one piece, one one chord, uh, and you start with the ending, uh, because you have not were not in the mood to practice all the stuff I taught you before. So you start your piece with an ending, and you just go on. And hello, gentlemen, I'd love to play for you this one. It's called Moon Rover. Thank you. And then you hold your, your tin cup around for the tips. You give me 40% and we are all settled. That was it. A short uh, insight into the uh, world of cocktail pianos. Uh, cocktail pianos is also wrong. There is no plural. Anyway, you see I'm getting like out of the track right now and uh, see you next video. Thanks for um, staying until here. I don't think many stayed. I think uh, most slammed the door on me and uh, went fishing. Uh, for you, the two or three who stayed until here, thank you very much. I get you coffee next time I see you. Bye bye from Berlin. I hope you liked my video and that you learned something. Now you can subscribe. Just press this subscribe button or click on another of my videos on this side. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, it's Christian from Berlin. And uh, a tutorial on how to grow up would be roughly the same as asking for a tutorial on cocktail piano. Because actually, a good cocktail piano needs a lot of time, experience, and also knowledge, just as growing up. So this can only be a glimpse because you didn't ask for a tutorial of a piece of a tutorial for a piece in cocktail piano style. You want to know how to play it. So we have to look into the motor uh, room and this uh, depends uh, and this needs a little bit of learning also on your part. So I made a lot of effort for this to make it uh, digestible for you, make you a little effort to take a little learning curve to understand some of the stuff. Okay. 
Thanks very much. And uh, let's go right there, have our first cocktail. Like maybe seafood cocktail. Mm.